You are listening to Let's Go, the weekly anime podcast about weekly anime from Dynamite in the Brain and Secret of the Sailor Madness. So come along and hang with the Let's Go gang. It's Dwayne. Hello. It's Niall. <laughs> and it's me, Brian, who apparently is living in a very dusty, cobwebbed uh, attic by the sounds of his voice. And we are covering on this episode the anime that aired the week of november the 25th december the 1st 2023 with a whole bunch of exceptions starting with pluto episode six still no title feel like if this had a title it would be sahad yeah it's, yeah and it's like you know we've had a lot of like you know at, at, at the base just get lured in oh it's just a robot murder mystery we've had a lot more robots and not that much mystery that lasted a while so it's kind of refreshing to see him guessing this out just eating the streets you know fucking questioning people like getting some leads following what you humans would call a hunch hmm. you're not programming My... to get a hunch because how can you be doing this i don't know I, I, I got the hunch update oh cool cool um yeah he's actually doing like detective stuff and not so much like finding clues but like in one case, questioning suspects, but in the rest of them, kind of just like talking to people who knew the person he's looking for. And it's like that will follow along a trail of things and things that one person says only become relevant later on. That kind of thing. You know, detective stuff. Yes. So he's <coughs> hearing me. He goes and uh, speaks to a buller who's willing to answer some questions. Hmm. Um, he has to apologize for mistaking him for a robot. Yeah, like he, he gets a lot of robot racism, mostly from other robots, which is kind of weird, but yeah. Hmm. Well, it's just how they, did, they chat about it and say, oh, sorry, for calling you a robot. What's well, fine? Yeah, because you lied to me just now and a robot wouldn't do that. I yeah. My, I got my eye on you, buddy. That was a nice but by, dig. But by the end of the episode, we're like, hang on. He's a lying robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in a robot advanced enough to lie because that's one of the other things that we get with uh, is it, uh, talking to... Um, God, why do I always forget the first robot murderer's name? Brow1589. Um, yeah, Brow1589 yeah, Bra is, is just like, yeah, if an AI got advanced enough, you know what it'd fucking do? Fucking lie, because that's what people can do. So it would definitely be able to lie. So presumably that's what... Um, Abla is to some extent. Yes. Um, yeah, so yeah, he, he figures out that, yeah, Abullah is lying about not knowing Sahad. Um, uh, there's a woman at the Sahad's complex. Who, yeah, he used to live uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, he stayed there for a couple of years. And it's, it's finding this stuff out of order because he's basically saying to Abura, it's like, do you recognize the guy in this picture? And he's like, not never seen him in my life. It's like, okay, everything else you've told me is true. That part was a lie. So I can identify you are human. Um, checking out the place where, I, does he come across the, no, he comes across the, I'm trying to remember what order. Uh, well, because he, goes, he, gets go, order. he goes to the old landlady, you know, for his dead mm. sound. He did up all the window yes. boxes, goes to the floral shop. For and say, oh, he came here every day. He even knew his flowers. He's very nice, you know. And then he goes to oh, the institute. Oh, he got the name off of the 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 the, the robot child, the, the robot, robot war orphan who was uh, selling flowers. <laughs> Flower peddler, yeah. Because yes. he he it's actually recognized the Ali, isn't he? The robot. Yeah, yep. he's like, you think I'll live up to my name? He's like, oh, absolutely, kid. Do you think I'll live up to Abdullah? Uh, and it's like, what? You know, the famous robot botanist. This is like the guy Sahad in my even, picture, yeah. or, or Sahad, yeah, because he doesn't have the right name yet, but he's following that name to find the the correct. Um, I'm using the wrong name. Sorry. Um, yeah, he gets the name Sahad off the robot kid, and therefore he can find his place of residence, the, the flower shop where he frequented in Amsterdam, where, where he went to study botany, I presume. Study and the... work in, yeah, he'd he one made you know, a different kind of tulips, you know, I, I said, this, this, this one rice here, but no, he wanted like, you know, a tulip that's been like blooming consistently for how long now? Three years? It's like, yeah. Which is yeah. related to the landlady's thing of, she was like, could you make a flower that would bloom all year? And he's like, no, no, flowers bloom to seed and then they wither. And that's that's the natural way of it. And, but he was like, could I fucking do that? And that would certainly help like populate the desert with plants that would grow in any environment and would stay as strong as they were. Yeah. And the names for his flowers knew them all like immediately. You know, there was Ingrid and there was Greta and there's one of my favorite called Bloom. What's it called again? Oh, yeah. There's an no old Pluto here. What? What? Huh? Hmm. 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 Pluto, Doctor, the flower you know that eats is? other flowers by the look of it. Mm. Mm. I, that's probably one of the reasons why he told the, the guy back in his lab, is like, don't plant 
Pluto until I get back. Because it's like, yeah, I did seem to kill every other flower in his field. And it's just like, is that, again, literal or metaphor? Or is this like one one thing will kill all the other things to survive? And much like the perfect AI is it'll kill nine billion, nine point nine billion other AIs just to be the one that rises to the top. Yeah. How do you show off your robots is super cool unless you do beat up all the other super cool robots. So it's the best super cool robot. Mm, mm. Uh, there's a lot of also discussing other people discussing what Tenber explained in the previous episode about yes that that robot would never wake up because it would have to it would be able to get through all of the uh, personalities and pick the right one. It doesn't feel uh, like to me it doesn't feel like like repeating itself as a as a show because it's other characters coming across this not having conversations with Tenma. They're kind of coming to their own conclusions about yeah. the same. They're coming to the same conclusions through a different method. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we also, in other important things, uh, in this back and forth, there's a guy selling charms on the street, and uh, he mentions Goji as one of them. Mm. Uh, could, a Dr. Like, Goji? No, no, it's just, it's just like a from folkloric dude. Who could grow flowers in the desert. And it's like, flowers in the desert? That's that metaphor that keeps coming up. Okay. Hmm. Um, and the teddy bear is very impressed with the six uh, detective work. And he, he thinks that it's going to beat the uh, perfect, beat Pluto. So I'm going to tell you how you're going to beat the six. So you don't get to see yeah. who the teddy bear is telling this to and what, he's, and what his plan is. Hmm. And, and he keeps getting phone calls as well. Like I said, the point if I get to, like, when I get back, make sure you check in because your frame is, is is damaged from that that, that shot you took. Point said, it's fine. I'll do it later. It'll be grand. I won't get into any fights. Don't worry. You don't get into, get into a fight, aren't you? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, elsewhere, there's a funeral going on for one of the murder scientists or the Epstein uh, creator. Yeah, the Australian Doctor um, Newton Howard. Yeah, and uh, obviously Epsilon's very upset. I mean, as upset as a robot can be, which is actually upset, as we learned, they they can be upset. Um, but he he is getting some commiseration from Ab Abdullah, who's very much so. This guy's getting around like, oh, town. I never met him, but like, oh man, fucking yeah, I lost all my family in the war, and he's like, yes, I heard you were entirely robotic. He's like, what what keeps you going, Epsilon? Is like, well, my family of war orphans keeps me going, and he's just like, you take care of those war orphans because my family all fucking died in the war. Um, yeah, and I was just like, you son of a bitch, I know you're up to shit, but you're just he's, well, he's asking for a shit, rainy day, <laughs> huh? I was for a funeral, huh? So your powers don't work quite well because you're, like, you're like solar and shit in a rainy day, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's well, it's something like that, yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> just trying to pick up on, oh, when would be, be a good time to jump you, I wonder, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fun, it's fun all the way across town to the boss conference at the hop and giving the keynote speech. Just wants to go for a whiz, you know, away from the robot bodyguards for a minute. And then Abba is in there for and saying, Hey, nice speech. And then it starts laying into him, uh, some of it deservedly so, but you know, still going a little bit too hard. Hmm. Just trying to unsettle him a bit, you know, trying to get to shake something out of him because he's, you know, he wants him to admit it when it wasn't you in a fucking Bora survey of commission, uh, the one that fucked up my country so badly. Well, we now know like that this is this guy visits the guys and then those guys get fucking off fairly soon after because <laughs> he, he, he likes to make it personal. It's like, hey, fuck you specifically. All right, I got to go. And then my robot's going to show up and murder you. Uh, seems to be his M.O. Um, but the difference is in this case is that um, one of the robot bodyguards, one of his two little Robocops that's coming with him uh, gets hacked. Uh, I guess it's getting hacked. It's getting remote controlled in, in some regard anyway. And it's kind of hulking out. So while the lads are kind of like, hey, like, get get back here. Uh, we need you to get back here. He's like, no, no, no. I'm, out, I'm hot in the lead of a case. So we got the, the contrast between the um, the it, the professor that met Gizikt, um being kidnapped, essentially. And uh, Gizikt himself was like, mm, got to fight Pluto. This weird underground, under the, I was going to say under the poppy fields, under the tulip fields in uh, mm -hmm. Amsterdam, um, or near Amsterdam kind of thing. Uh, but they're not telling Gizik is just like, hey, is, is the presser okay? He's like, yeah, he's grand. You, you just gotta come back. Come on. Don't, don't tell don't tell him the SWAT team is standing by to take out take him out if it goes too far. 
don't tell him I keep saying the SWAT team, take oh, the shot, shoot. take the shot. And the, and the SWAT team are like, we don't have a clean shot. We'll have to shoot through the professor. And I'm, I'm just like, sure, you got to let go of the button when you're talking. Oh, son of a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're doing a piss poor job of hiding it because he's. Um, but yeah, Gazik is is on the trail of the secret underground um, under under Tulip uh, facility where is Pluto's home. And Pluto's is home, recuperating from the last fight with um, with Heracles. So um, shit goes down, but I, he basically like he takes a bunch of hits from that cockroach man. Who there's multiple cockroach men, so that's great. Yeah. I'm I'm glad there's more of those cockroach men around. Those you guys are goons, gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gone dead to rights. So his phone, like the phone, shooting lasers, and his phone is doing this one weird, fun bendy horn things, wrapping around stuff. But he's afraid, you know. Fun. He doesn't want to fight. He's backing down. So it's just fun saying, "Oh, I can't sit in the restaurant." Fun and saying, "I can't. I can't rest. I can't rest a robot." It's, 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 it's like you know. No. He's buried it, like Pluto no has buried himself in rubble, which to, I, I was like, that's a protective measure. That's not that's not attacking me. So I I can't Plus like my not being aggressive. I can't bring him in. My programming says I can't like shoot a robot who is not resisting arrest. It's just like it, it's not fighting or anything. It's just you know lying the fuck down basically under a pile of rubble. And it's just like, hey, by the way, and one of the things that you calm down Pluto with is by telling Pluto his actual name, which. Yeah, it seemed to react to mm. or original name, I suppose, might be the thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, we get a flashback uh, from Zahard's point of view. Because mm. a lot uh, of the but... the story didn't line up where he left his uh, his study abroad to go back and join the the army when his home country was, you know, under robot wars. Um, because his father died, he had to go back home, and it's like his father didn't die. We fucking know that, and, and even his memories, like, oh, dad, I thought you died. It's like, no, they killed my wife, my daughter, and your brother, my my robot son, which is um, bad. You gotta get revenge for me, boy. Um, it, it was very uh, much. Like, I just want to grow flowers. No, this is for the best. I'm gonna plug you into this giant robot I got downstairs. Like, it, it's not like I had all of this set up or anything. Don't fucking worry about it. It's cool. Hmm. Yes, because we also know we've learned earlier that a Buller had died from the person who the photo got shown to, or shown. She dug out another photo. And she she said he went home to because his father died, and, and yeah. it's like, hmm. oh, I just do like a little like no defrag the hard drive here when we start a photograph. Oh my goodness, it's a Buller, but he's a, 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 a alive. I, I did yeah. kind of like your one having to go into her archives, which I presume like someplace where she's put the, the old hard drives for old tenants and pull it out and it's just like it wasn't a zoom enhanced it's just like just fucking scroll over on the on the 3d projection of the photo i was just like that's, that's nice. how you guys you create tension it's called it's yeah, called yeah. cinema Dwayne. you know yeah and, you know, I, I like it i'm saying it's good but it's it's like a just a, a 3d hologram version of it's like the zoom enhance and that kind of thing but it worked a lot better yeah yeah same thing as a bullet was saying to Hoffman there, that little tense uh, exchange mm. in, in the toilets there. He was faking a man saying, Fun, like, like, what what would you do, like, you know, if a robot I committed, like, something like a heinous act, like, would, would you execute them? If one's in, um, well, it had to be something like, you know, pretty bad. Like, let's well, just say, like, you know, like killing somebody. It's like, well, that's, that would never happen because, like, you know, like robots are they're, they're built to front of They've got to follow the laws. They wouldn't do that. If one's saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But say it, they did. And say mm. it definitely happened. And say from just here, people invested in this that it, or did this to not like ever get out or people to know about it. What would you do then? Would you erase his memory of it happened to cover up the whole thing, something like that? It's like, did, well, no. So half and putting the pieces together too, fun and saying, ah, they've covered mm. up fucking Gisik's memory of the fucking the person that he killed. Because it's not like Hoffman is complicit or anything. Yeah, it, it he know he's pretty sure that it, the director is higher up in the chain than him erased Kazik's memory and replaced it with a different thing and he's just like I can't prove any of this because it's fucking erased um but like should I go further with this like it's the kind of thing of like is he keeping shit quiet and that is, that's kind of eating him up yeah hmm. this a lot of these like genius scientists get told a lot or tell themselves you know, this is what robots can and can't do you know yeah. we're, we're, we're the ones who are going to like you know chart the course for them it's like yeah but hmm. at a certain stage now they're 
they're charting their own, they're making their own way, you know. Even seeing things like, you no, know, we have like robot adoption now that they're trying to like eliminate humans up to it, including like just having a family of their own. Yeah. So yeah. they're their own like entities of, of themselves, you know. And even 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 the best of them, even someone like a Kaufman or a Jenny Music, they forget that. I think Ten is the only guy like you no, know, if he's like the Maverick, he he gets it, you know, he gets that one. No, there is like something like more going on with this. So I feel like, you know, the genuine loss of like of, of Atom the same as it's me on some because I know what that AI that antithesis is capable of. It's mm-hmm. a person, not a not a, not a machine. And I do appreciate that this whole thing is kind of doing it's definitely doing the robot racism like robots in place of whatever uh, subjugated people for sure. But it's also doing the thing of was like, what if what if a robot became basically indistinguishable from a person? It's like, what does that mean? What does that mean for person? What does that mean for robotics? It's just like, because even the the thought of like going in and editing a robot's memory without the robot's consent, like all the scientists were like, dude, that's fucked up. You can't fucking do that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, it's it's asking some sci-fi type questions as well. Yeah. Yeah, because he's getting like you no know, more that 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 put that memory back then as well with the fucking the feedback thing, and so it wasn't just that fucking fucking. A lost fucking like brother was you know a robot child murderer. The ro- one of the robot childs he murdered was G6 and Helena's fucking like, child who they adopted. But not the street. It's still, still like fun busted down in the yoke, you know, fun didn't have, even have, a, have, have an arm on it, but he was ours, you know. But yeah, they they, t- they they took in it. a they took in a war orphan Abo and um like put like. Uh, met him into like a more person like he was becoming more of a person like all robots tend to do when given love and affection and the time and space to do that um but i do appreciate that the show never explicitly says that as well it's just like you can put the piece together from looking at it with your eyeballs basically yeah yeah which begs the question then you know that that means if you seen that one would take someone like the like sick who's usually for him probably be a level-headed cool operator like uh what that's if you take something like that to drive him to commit the actions that he did so what kind of thing, why would it take for like an all around gentle, peaceful, nice fellow like Sahad, what would make him break the turn or something like Pluto mm-hmm. and go out and just be between murdering people and robots? Yeah, yeah. It's scary. Mm. Well, fuck this job. I, you can't fire me. I quit. Robots can't do that. Well, I did the first time for everything. Well, I've got holiday built up, so I'm taking a year off. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> Which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and I guess murdered by a robot child. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, know, like, no, you know, it's you know, it's a real sicko because this this murderer he likes like like poetic symmetry is what this does, like like a real murderer kind of guy. He's like, oh, I'll send him the robot war orphan with the the flower seller one which i'll mistake for a different flower seller robot because that robot had two arms and also why would that guy from per, uh, persia being in be in amsterdam all of a fucking sudden um but no they, they went out of their way to to blow up Gazik, and it's, it's kind of like i think you kind of see the emotions come out in his face uh, towards the end as well and i'm guessing that's one of the things that he was developing but obviously locked away when they erased the memory of his robot son and his robot son's murder so yeah yeah he just knew he, he was for that. He was for this fucking long walk up a shore pier there. Like, no fun. He's just, oh, he's calling Hoffman. He's calling Hannah for and saying, it's fine. Let's want to go on holiday. It'll all be grand when we get back. You know, I'm, I'm just saying goodbye to everybody I know and love now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it takes it out. No, it, it feels very like, uh, it feels very fucking like, you know, uh, French from film noir kind of thing, you know, fun. It's yeah. there, you know, fun. It's just in the rain, you know. He just fun. He's fun on the ground, you know. The petals, of, the petals of flowers are scattered everywhere. Except he's got like a massive hole blown in his chest. He's on the circuitry, kind of like you know, fizzle out the life, dying out of it. Mm-hmm. And no funeral, you know. If um, you know, if we just we, you get like you know some snatches of the news report, but that's it. You just cuts for away for one thing. Oh hell, I don't want to go on a holiday anyway. I've got it, man. She's you no, know, she's been through a hard time. She's just putting on a brave face. I think that made, made it worse that they didn't do a funeral. It was just like, hey, the Gazik's creator is going to bring Helena on that Jap- Japan holiday that he always promised he was going to take her on. It's like, oh, it's our famous uh, Japanese um, professor. He's going to show us up. And they're both looking at her. It's like, she's really fucking depressed, right? It's like, oh, yeah, she's super depressed. <laughs> it's like, I know she's a robot and does not fucking show that. But they're both kind of like, we'll, we'll, we'll take her to all the holiday cry. sites. 
Tenma, Tenma would make her cry. <laughs> Let's give her to Tenma. I mean, with that silky smooth voice, how, how is he not going to? Um, so he's going he's gonna to talk her through. Here's how you start grieving, right? It doesn't go away, but you'll get better as you pretend, and then you'll be practiced at it, and then you'll just continue to grieve for your, the rest of your natural existence. That's You're getting it. And he's, him smiling and crying while doing it, I was like, Jesus, dude, you need therapy. Yeah, well, <laughs> he loves to grieve. He spent every, every last second after his son died doing yeah. it. Mm, mm, mm. In one way or another. Yeah. And I guess he will continue for the next two episodes. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, but Kasut was the main character. How could he get killed off in the middle of the story? Well, actually, the, the thing is called uh, Pluto, and the original version yes. is called The World's Greatest Robots, which increasingly decrease in number. It doesn't say that part in the original title, but, you know, that's that's what it's yeah, about. Yeah. As, you know, because as it goes down the way, one saying, oh, yeah, he's in the hit list, too. So you, it, it, you, it's very easy to, to forget that, you know, because you get so involved in it. One saying, but what happens now? I mean, who's going to save the day? Who is going to stop the murders? Mm-hmm. Then so. we've got... Akubicon, episode four, Envy, in hmm. which uh, we find out who was following the landlady last episode. It was uh, a guy who apparently is a caricature of one of Shigeru Mizuki's friends. That's why you've seen the character design in the Kitaro show as well. He uh-huh. was elite the vampire mm-hmm. in Kitaro. Uh, but yes, here he is the assistant of a big famous movie director uh, who has come to hire the services of Akuma and Mistopheles the Third in order to find a cursed film of his biggest rival. See, this is why this is why they keep you no know, um villain villains that are almost their, 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 their films are pretty much but with the villain. It's not for task purposes. It's because they're cursed films made with the, the aid of a pact with the <laughs> devil himself. Uh, to try to save did, our lives out there, all right? So they, 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 they know this isn't meant for us mortals. I did like the opening of the landlord showing up. It's like, hey, hey Gumagan, what's up? It's like, oh, there's a naked lady's vagina. All right. I mean, I'm just going to take this as totally normal and proper. And it's just because that de- that damn demon has come back to their door like a like a stray dog. Yes. Oh, yes. The subplot, the B-plot is Gremory is... Back. She keeps showing up and being involved in the A plot, but like in a very minor way, basically. Yeah. Yeah, she finds the film. It's, hmm. She like takes care of that part of the plot for us. So that's um, how I got it. Hmm. Uh, as she's kind of trying to capture Akuma's Kun's heart, it seems to be. I mean, like, really? not not figuratively, to because she loves him. Because she says it seems like it would be really fucking tasty if I ate it. So I'll do a thing for you, but then I get to eat your heart. And he's like, "Yeah, sounds good." All right. I didn't say when. Ah, but I did all this stuff for you. Well, you got to keep doing stuff for me until I say when. Ah, Jesus. I did you appreciate the Shakespearean reference, but it's like, yeah, but you know he's going to fuck you over because you've very loosely defined the terms of this deal, and yeah, you took that implied to all consent and express written consent. Hmm. Uh, so they watch the film. Luckily, their office is at a cinema, uh, so they can just. There's also stuff about the landlady's missing husband. Briefly yeah, which the, because the film director knows her husband, but he's like he's missing, presumed dead, and it's like, what makes you fucking think he's dead? Says so the and he's like, ah, it's just my gut as a fucking very famous director. That's how these things go. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, uh, hmm. he seems to enjoy the film. Well, it it upsets him greatly. It, it moves yes. him to tears, and and then he's like, and he, it's like, oh, so your best friend's film? It's like you're you're going to release it to the world. It's like, what are you what are you talking about? Pouring lighting fluid on the fucking film? It's just like, no, nah, I'm setting it on fire. Because oh, fuck bird. that guy. He Arr. was always my rival. We only played up the friendship because we were always fucking trying to outdo each other. Like, ah, oh, I fucking hate that bastard. And, oh, my heart having a heart attack. And this is all to the thing of his assistant, who our, our our demon from earlier is like, you know that fucker's a demon, right? And at the window, like, yeah, we know he's a demon. And it's like, what, what's his angle? So they kind of corner him at the funeral, and it's like, okay, Leviathan, what was? Why did you fucking do this shit? It's like, because it's because they're, they're they're envious. That's they're the name envious the, the, as fuck, man. I love it. I get off on it. Mm. Uh, yeah, but, there's a little bit between this though, where Mustafeles is mad at the director. Who just died, 
at his brother's yeah because he thought it was well, about he thought he was helping some friends out and again yeah. he's, he's constantly side glancing angrily at Cooper. yeah he sounds like, like see this is what friends do not like this guy he's, 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 this, this was a fucking dick hmm. and his mom explains oh yeah no he's a great director we watched one of his films when i was dating your dad and, that and was i was going to reply to him yeah i was going to reply to his like his marriage proposal after the film i was going to turn him down but like we we cried at the same parts and so i was just like oh no we we can probably work this out i thought like a demon and a human that's not going to work but we we enjoyed the same parts of the film so yeah like, you might not even be here if it wasn't for that film so then the stuff leaves the Man, third stop. one he's, <laughs> he's in tears and yeah at the same like parts that. of the film as, as his parents yeah so he's yes. just like fuck okay so an asshole can make a beautiful work that does good in the world it's like yeah hard lesson to learn but it is true mm. uh yes yeah, so the Python's thing as a demon is he loves the taste of human envy uh and it turns out he wasn't summoned by either of these directors he was summoned by a director who is envious of them both Hmm. But that guy died fucking on like no one remembered his name or anything like that, so it didn't really work out for him. And, was, and again, because like, why did you stick around then? It's like, because these guys, right? They were friends and rivals, and they pushed each other to do further and further fucking things. So like the last film that the director that hired him, uh, Akumakan, uh, like made was uh, really good. So your man's like, I gotta fucking outdo it. I'll go to the studios, get a shitload of money. And make just some fucking schlock blockbuster fucking bullshit. Ah, oh, this film fucking, it's just a bad it's fucking no film. No poetry to it. This, it's entirely industry fucking made bullshit. I need to pretend the film was cursed and I hired a demon to make me a really good film and um, I'll keep it away from himself. So your man was actually, I wanted to see his last work because he'll still have some of his directorial flair in it. And then I'm going to destroy it because I, I don't want this to be his lasting legacy of my friend and rival. So an envy that's, I think he says like envy that's both bitter and sweet. That it's kind of thing. It circles all the way back around to being friends again. It's like, you know, yeah. to, 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 to admiration, you know, there's like, you know. It's, a, it's there's an envy, envy that actually made them both you know? better people and made them better artists. And it's just like, yes. so it was good. It was a positive envy. It's like, yeah, envy can be a good thing, but I am a demon and I eat envy. So, you know, it works out for me. Yeah. Not, he points not out trying to be positive in the world, but, you know. Like, there was admiration there as well, but I'm not interested in the admiration. because I. That's, that's not I, the bit I eat. No. Not give me it. hives. So I can't have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, it's a it's a fascinating little story of yeah, it's just that it's there's no bad guys in this story. Yeah, it's 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 just no. resolved like straight away wherever we can have eyes, but any kind of supernatural thing is fun while it gets it ends with burning the film. There's no is is that the end of it? Is the devil gonna come and fucking like get his because he burned the film? Is not gonna happen for it? No, it's just this story between two two old men, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 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 intimation is, is basically the the director had used the last of his life to try and hunt down this film. He knew he was dying. That's why he paid Rakuma mm. to fight this film. This is what he wanted to do with the and remaining. And he's spending the last of his life to prote- protect his friend and rival's legacy, basically, rather than... And, and to get one last thing is like, I want to see the last thing of it is like, yeah, this isn't actually good, though. That's He was crying. It was just like, because it was just like, I see the bits of you that you put in there. It's still shite. And I am going to protect your legacy from that. And he's just thinking about his dead friend, basically, at that stage. So, yeah, the the, the tears are for many complicated reasons. And the bad guy is some random guy who doesn't get named, who died way before this entire fucking episode and doesn't matter. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a bit of insight. See, that's what friends are. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get it. I don't get it. Seems too complicated. Let me go to this half naked mummy. Uh, mm. uh, and then and then we see whatever's happening in the next episode start to happen. There's metal going through people's bodies and screaming. And metal and music, so yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. I'd forgotten about that. Again, to make you just watch these all in a fucking row. I get it, I get it. Yeah. It's pretty well edited that way and mm. uh, written. Yeah, enjoy this. This is, I mean, Pluto's good, but it's a lot, it's heavy work. It feels watching it in an hour rather yeah. than. Yeah. Like, it's just heavy emotionally as well. Like, I was waiting for it to happen, and everyone said, no, nah, I know this scene too well. It's not going to get in the same way. Robot Poppy, no, nope, that was in bits <laughs> again. That was in bits all over again. It's just yeah, one, it's one yeah. of those scenes I know if I was an actor, it's like summing up like tears. It's one thing. That's probably like one of, one of the things I have, I'd have it in the, in the chamber, if I'm saying. Robot puppy, go. Because 
I think Pluto does a good job of being like prestige anime, that kind of thing. Um, but like, yeah, it it is a bit like you're basically sitting down to watch a, a, a one installment of a series of films at that stage. Yeah. Whereas this Akuma Code feels like this, particularly this episode, feels like this is a perfectly constructed short story. Yes. Yeah. It's it's exactly as much as it needs to be. It has as much detail as it needs. Yeah. A little bit of tightness. Yeah, it's, it can go a long way. Hmm. Mm. So we've got Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, Episode 3, Ramona Rents a Video. I think it's starting to take off right about here, actually. I think this is... Mm-hmm. I'm affecting a little bit, and it's kind of very generous sort of, of, I suppose, the motivation behind doing this. is like, can we just, like, you know, get into a little bit more what was going on between these posts? Because it's just, like, glass yeah. over in service point. It's all, it's all about how, how, how did they relate to the main character, Scott? How did they relate to him? How did they relate to each other before he ever showed up, you know? I've ever, and, ever played a video game where you, you're fighting a boss character, and I was just like, "There's, l- listen, Melania, if we could talk this fucking out, I could explain that this is all going to fucking work out. Like, I've actually taken out the dude who kidnapped your brother, so we can work. The- it's just, if you could talk, you might be able to talk your way out of the boss fight. Also, you could do a little bit of the boss fight because it'll be a fucking sweet fight. So that'll, we yeah. could get both. We could get both. It'd be nice. Yeah, so essentially, it's the bulk of it is Roxy and Ramona resolving. Uh, where they left off like why, yeah. why they broke up or why Ramona was in like a shitty place or like just was immature or why did you just leave like that well I didn't, pre- yeah. no connections between Gideon and uh, Julie yeah and also uh, young Neil has written a play in his sleep with the assistance of some sort of uh... sleep paralysis demon he calls <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a, guy in a, a guy in a hoodie and a gas mask who's like shh because Neil just decided to be a screenwriter, and I feel like that's very, um, <laughs> that's that's very much so. It's like, so is, is Leo Valley's self insert young Neil? I didn't. I got that play in me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just at the, again, the thing of the creative process, like, yeah, I'll fucking, oh, I'm, I'm a cinephile now. It's, it's, and him, him talking on the phone is like, yeah, it's, it, it's your son, young Neil. Don't, don't worry about it, mom. Maybe his parents call him that. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, he can't get anything out. And he's just like, oh, wow, I'm a fucking screenwriter now. Because clearly I must have wrote this in my sleep. That's definitely what happened. And that masked man is nothing to do with the video footage we see later on of Scott definitely isn't dead. It was it was a it was a, a fake up. It was it was thrown together. Ramona was right. Got, got Zap Rooter for them. We'll, we'll go down like the video shop and just like just, just like, back into the left and it. it's like yep. He, he got he got jumped just before that and he just like threw a few quid uh, out the whirlpool to cover it up. Because you don't you don't have to hide a body in this video gamey type world. Yeah, you just, you just warp them away, throw the change in, and the fact that Ramona could still see Scott's um hyperspace dream space that you could move through it was just like oh fuck so if yeah. that still exists he's still there somewhere um but yeah trying to figure it out and uh following up on scott's uh, exes obviously one of which is a major celebrity and too hot for us to get an interview with so we're gonna have to leave that one off but you could talk to kim who is angry but fairly sound out so yeah yeah so apparently that stuff with the kim the flashback to kim and scott mm. S- relationship was originally in an adult swim short oh. yeah no, it is. It's, 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 it's there in the comic as well like you know and but that's the the only other adaptation of it because yeah but there's, there's, also the like, there's, there's two there's two different versions but there's like you know there's the let's say romanticized version of what went down and there's what actually went down and uh, okay, okay. kim seems to be kind of given like you know maybe a bit of the romanticized one you know broad strokes for it anyway it's it's it's, it's kind of interesting seeing too, like you know, is absent him, you know, the original kind of story, spot Scott, you know, fun, and he has to fucking, you know, fun. You gotta fucking be an adult and be fucking, you know, a bit just straight up with people, all right? Can't you just be fucking around all the time? It's not it's not on like you've done it so many people yourself. You can't confront them that. So you kind of see over time. Oh, he's a main dude, but fun. Yeah, he's you can be a bit of a, a bit of a little, little fucking up just prick sometimes as well. I can say I can see why people want to break up with him, but Ramona doesn't know all that. She has this kind of idealized version of him as well from the set that one date that they had. But the other thing is, like, by doing this investigation, you can see why people also like Scott. Because when she goes into yeah. uh, the coffee shop, I've forgotten how much I like um, Julie, uh, her constant swearing. Very funny. Um, where it, it, I think it was with Julia, where she goes, like, did the first date go well? And Rowan was like, 
yeah, actually, it really did. And she's like, with Scott Pilgrim, the date went well with that. And it's like, so, like, people do like him. And, it, like, again, when Kim's telling the story to Ramona, she's like, that was, like, a really nice moment. Um, And, and Ramona's kind of like, that's dumb as shit. That's not romantic at all. It's like, I did beat up, like, a rival school, uh, United by Fate, uh, like, guys who'd kidnapped me at some stage. It's like, eh, that's not very romantic. It's, just, it's a very video game, but, you know. Mm. Um, the the sheep part is what won my heart initially. Um, that kind of yeah. thing. Just, so you, you can see through other people why they like him, liked yeah. him, still like him because he's not dead apparently. So yeah. Mm. Just that's a nice little like little interactions and moments like that. Uh, yes. This 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 came in now. This just jamming. She just wants to learn the basics. Where is this? Where is that? Such a nice sequence. You know, just like, oh. just, just like dun, dun. hold on, I can do this. But dun. And just like, you know, hey, the, hey, the jam go, session go, go, go. is so nice. Yeah, yeah. Come on, just, 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 just go at it now, and I'll just like, you know, I'll just follow you. I'll do a little tap, 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 tap on drums, and just like, you know, I'll be jamming away for and saying, oh yeah, just get this nice little moment between the two of them. If I'm not saying anything, but just, just jamming, and it's, it's like, mm. we gotta go. Well, how long have we been playing here for? Well, four hours. Oh shit, <laughs> we gotta, gotta be this. I'm no, she's work. been it's like he, uh, he invites her into the band because they need a new bassist, and it's like, how long have you been playing bass? It's like four hours is how long I've been playing <laughs> bass. But yeah, it's such a nice sequence of her just playing like a simple bass line and kind of came like riffing on that, and it's just like, oh, it's it's so good. Um, and I, I thought that was going to be like the nice animation sequence in the thing, but then uh, uh, Ramona's evil ex shows up in the in the in the DVD shop who says like you you guys at Netflix delivery are going to put us out of business and how little you, you got it right but not in the way that you think um there Kim but yeah uh, Ramona's evil ex shows up and they have a fucking class fight in the video shop <laughs> going into uh, the videos yeah yeah um that was a nice um bit of stuff as well because I was like I, can, I feel like I can half identify some of these scenes that kind of thing <laughs> I, I bet someone got, has, yeah. You got a gangster film, you got right up with a falling off a plane, uh, mm-hmm. and plenty of stuff for you just from saying, oh, if you, if you just pause the tape, I, I'm going to beat you up and you can't do nothing about it. Uh, <laughs> we wind up as falling off one. Kim, stop that. <laughs> We're trying to have a fight up here. But I was even enjoying the fight when it was the simple, like they're just beating each other in the in the aisles and the, the shelves of DVDs are falling down on them and stuff. I was just like, mm. yeah, all of this looks fucking great. It's such a nice like way to it it's, well, just, it's just like you know oh, we're, we're like you know two fucking like ninja type girls we're just like kind of just being dirty and just fun tackling each other like into them it's just like you know oh, I'm yeah. just getting down down the dirt now this is how it is mm. when you meet your ex again after so many years it, it only kind of gets fancy when they like accidentally fight their way into several movies basically um yeah movies are good for processing some of those emotions that we might have left unsaid <laughs> but we'll say them out loud anyway and say hey Sorry for I left things off when well, I was going through some shit and I didn't I shouldn't have done that to you. And I, I liked Roxy kind of being like like apology accepted. Um can we be so we're friends? It's like and she's like with benefits? And it's like not with benefits. And it's just like, how about you, other girl? It's like, oh, I'm not a lesbian. Eh, fuck it, let's give it a go. No, I'm not not a lesbian. She's like, ah, fucking worth a shot. Do, do, do. And Roxy just walks out of there like a champ. It's great. She's just fine <laughs> now. She's like, you know, all this kind of lingering, like, you know, well, that's good. You know, she's got some, some catharsis from the soul thing. You know, yeah. and maybe maybe we can do the same for all the rest of them. It's just like, you know, oh, like, they're not evil. Just misunderstood it. They just turned into kind of a prick from a shitty situation, which is the thing that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. The twins are probably, you know, going to drop something there. They've left a robot disguised as a bin to watch people. Like, ah, these guys are up to something. They're going to make, make their own play. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably evil, evil all the way through. No hope yeah. for them. Mm, then we've got Spy Family episode thirty-three, the Symphony upon the Ship, in which you're just murders people for most of the episode. Yeah, yeah. I'll fucking right. Fireworks, fireworks. Mm, mm, mm. And the, the very obvious thing of the fireworks with explosions of blood and then the, the, the you know, the kind of flames dripping down of fireworks and dripping blood. And it was just like, ah, oh, mm, lovely. It, it, it was fun in the comic when it was just being very yes. seen in, see in motion, you know. It just gets so ridiculous at one stage. It's just like, you know, it's just, I'm, 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 not, I'm not fucking the dynamite killer. He just fun stabs him off and lays him out in the ground for one scene. Ah, I used to fun size. Fun size. Oh, it's just stabs him off and then it's like... 
And then I look for oh for God's sake, and another one comes out, you gotta run at him and for and the director there was like sweeping away the bodies, you know, oh Jesus God, how many more of them could it possibly be? There's a, there's there's so many sequences of just like she has to kill a lot of themed assassins in this and where she's just running down the side of the boat, like stabbing guys and the, the, the guy is cleaning up with her with the boat and he just knocks them over with the overboard with a sweeping brush. Like just a, a long well, sequence of it. I was like, cases, that's great. In some cases he's taking the corpse. Cleaning the corpse of all the mm. blood and then hurling the co- <laughs> then now clean corpse overboard. Mm. And he's more, he's more complaining. He's like, do you have to make such a mess? And I was like, I mean, like, I, I understand that, that like, we, we got a lot of motherfuckers to kill. It's convenient that they're all here for us and like, I can be here like to uh, off the sniper and like take them out with their own fucking sniper guy. But then I need to go down there and fucking sweep up after them. It's like, ah, it's such a mess. It's meant to be a sticking mission, you already forget that. It's made from some covert <laughs> shit. You're fucking it all up for us right now. She, she's not getting the full no kill bonus, but she is an assassin. So that's probably going to happen. Yeah. yeah, those dudes are going to get getting it rough. We're getting those needles in places needles aren't meant to go. Uh, uh, and it does not just like, you know, shy away from that, which I'm very admirable, admirable of. Mm, mm, mm. Then you get like, uh, like a, like a mid boss level type dude. You no, know, he's, he's got the katana, he's got the quick draw thing. And oh, he's tougher. Oh, I got I to be go serious with this man. Mm, mm, mm. She's pondering why she's doing the job because, as the head assassin points out, well, you could just kill the family. It will pay you. you. You kill people for money. And she's like, I'm not like you. And then she pauses and like, no, hang on a second. Yeah, I do kill people for money. Um, I did get into this to kill people for money. Why did I want money? I wanted money to protect my brother. My brother's a grown ass man now and makes his own fucking money. I'm not protecting him for the money. Why am I still killing to preserve justice? I've never been like super high ideals or anything. Like, so, I mean, like I am making the world better by taking out nasty motherfuckers, but like someone else could do it. I don't need yeah, to fucking she, do it. She remembers that if she gets injured, she's going to be transferred to cover up the injury. She won't be able to stay with the forges anymore. Yeah, if if you get too badly injured, we'll just say you got transferred. Uh, that's what I'll tell Forger, says her handler. And she's just like, she doesn't say it, but obviously she's thinking, don't want to want to stay because she like one of the things is the guy's like ah, what are your last words i'm holding a sword she's just like fuck who's gonna pick up lloyd's shirt from the dry cleaners who's gonna bring back anya's library books it's like it's just like the simple things that give her joy that allows her these acts of service um is one of the ways she expresses love uh to her family their family and you love them you idiot you, she did you it all for the people doesn't matter who those people are as long as you love them you know the money is just like no the money is nice nice to have yeah. Let's, look at the, let's look at that wrong. If I put Yuri to foreign cottage, let's, let's get that out of the way But mm. they do it for the people, ultimately. Mm. And then apparently, and also I'm the dog. short after the credits. Uh, uh, it is. Um, no, it's, 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 we, all did, we all did Frankie picking out chips, chicks with a dog. Um, so it's Yuri. Yuri. Um, basically, he, he gets sick in the middle of a mission. Oh, like he, yes. just, he just collapses with a cold. So we get the flashback to your special tea that she makes to save his life or make him immune to all poisons, I think is what it ends up fucking doing. But um, I, I like, again, his scarred up fucking boss guy that's in the same organization is just like more of a nice, normal guy than most of the characters in this. He's like, are you sure you want the, the, the bear tea? Like, that's the nastiest tasting herbal tea. And he's like, yeah, it's the closest commercially available thing to my sister's tea. It it does make me throw it up immediately. So that that's ideally what I want to get better. Because he, apparently he's gone down with a cold because he thought about the fact that his sister isn't around and that instantly, like, killed his immune system. <laughs> he's got it bad. Mm. Uh, then... Star Gathering, episode 21, the old eye Watergate resplendence. How are we going to fight this small child who wants to turn us into meatballs? Well, we get like a, a, a very stern, imperious woman out to discipline him. That's mm. how. We, yes. we can't use the priest because he takes too fucking long. Uh, we can't use the hungry mm. ghost because he's like emergency ghost, basically. Uh, we can't use the... The the uh, he's 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 easy on kids, you know. Yeah, yeah he doesn't, doesn't right attack kids. So what about a dickhead freaking courtesan? It's like perfect. That'll that'll do perfectly. I mean, like he's gonna immediately see her as his, his mother. It's like that's fine. He sees everyone as his mother. It doesn't make a difference. That's okay. But make sure we get him to injure her before we release her, so that he doesn't just automatically turn on us. Uh, yeah, she will. She will do that. So we'll just hold her in front of one of his attacks. It's like brilliant. Now yeah. she's going to be mad at him. Before this, they, yeah. they have to use the 
the the hungry ghost to eat the ghosts of the murderous stepmother who was trying to soar up Ico. Um, yeah, they, they've kind of like split the party where um, he, he remains pinned with these like ghostly spectral arms to the ground and, and the tide's coming in, so he's going to drown. And um, uh, our little kid has been, I guess yeah, he's being strangled at the top of the, the, the dam. So That's what he does. Gonna, he, 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 the ghost, he hangs you from the bridge and then he turns into meatballs. Then he he turn- ex- explodes the core of your being into meatballs. Well, he scribbles over in the sketch pad, so I was like, we need to get the sketch pad off him, but we need to get priority straight. So uh, he says, it's like, all right, go save Yayoi, because she's the badass one. We, we need them. That's a small, small child is a muscle of this team. You got to have her. Mm. Right? We need her. So after rescuing her, um, and again, she's just got the little finger thing. She's using it as a lightsaber at this fucking stage, which is very odd. But yeah, she, um, she has to be helped. But yeah, it, look, it kind of looks like for a second that... Um, when they're trying to leave the bridge, they obviously get separated, and the 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 stairwell turns into the apartment where your the kid's dad got chopped up. But it's like it's not chopping her up because it's affecting the again the ghost thing, which has the hungry ghost in it. I don't know his name yet. Have we gotten a name for him? This hungry ghost. This ghost at the moment. So yeah, he takes Tom a bite Paul. out of the the ghosts of the parents, um, so they can go save our our boy who's who's being slowly drowned. <laughs> We get him out. We got a team together, and if we, if you, um, now we got to fun taunts the um the head little boy goes. She's just fun. Truth and fun scene. It's like, come get me, motherfucker. It's like, oh, <laughs> that makes him drop the sketch pad and go after him. Like that's what I thought he would do. He's got to taunt yeah. him enough. So the sketch pad's down, so he can't use it anymore. You can't scribble on it because it's underwater. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, now it's down to like the quarters are now, and. She gets a whole fucking sequence, which is which is pretty cool. Yes, I do we like get, that. We get an explosion. Procession comes out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here, 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 here. Um, we get a couple of explanations of her. We get the initial explanation, and then when they have to turn her into the her third phase forcibly by making her look at herself in the mirror, mm. then we get the full flashback as to uh, how why she all this is fucked up. Set yeah. herself on fire. Um, uh, but yeah, it's her. Her powers is she has these butterflies and they land on you and they suck out your life force. So even though you're pulping her into mush, she's recovering by eating your life force. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's yeah. interesting kind of thing because he he no, and he smushes turns into meatballs. He eats that and he gets his so we're both kind of like sassing so each kind other of a and war. then yeah. replacing off each other. So it's just it's going back and forth with them all the time. Mm-hmm. And then his uh, arms grow super big and super hard, and you can't land. It's very much more difficult to take him out then. Yeah, he like wraps up the spectral arms he has in like the the other kind of ghost. So he's like a. I I was like, oh, he's in the end sequence now. Yeah, I do see they're they are going to recruit this horrible child. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So this is the the corner second. We get a full name. I think in the subs, it's Otagiri Oiran, the soul sucking courtesan. Hmm. Mm. And her tale is that she was a beautiful child born into poverty, so the family sold her off. Uh, the the way it a... says it's like, so so she decided to work as a courtesan to keep her family supported. And I was like, yep. decided. Oh, we've, uh, are we all frozen up or just Wayne? Just Wayne. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm very happy about it though. Mm, uh, oh yeah, you know it, it, it's not a happy story, you know. And it was an apprentice, <laughs> uh, you know. She got oh, he, he's going to be your apprentice. He's going to be like no trainer to be like no the top like uh, Orozan like you. Oh yeah, I'm on that. Hey, here's a little gift for your kid. You know, fun. It's a miracle. Don't it, your beauty is yours. You know, fun. Don't anybody tell you otherwise. You no, know, that's your biggest asset. Mm. And she's going to be set up but like uh, a. A man of good standing, you know, if you can get out of his life finally, be married off, you know, and, and go be this dude's wife instead. But the prince was jealous of that, so poisoned the tea, and then the phone pinned it on the oil ran in front and saying, You're out of here, you're fucking you're ruined, you'll never work in this town again. And and on the way I think she actually got the shit beat out of her because it's like, you know, get her teeth knocked out, uh get some disease which kind of break out in bulbous lesions and things like that. Basically does fucking a litany of of despair and disgrace. It's pretty harrowing. So um, yeah, we we like initially we did find out that 
um, yeah, you know, I came across this ghost from finding being sold a haunted mirror for very cheap, and it's just like, so this is what the mirror is. You one's coming back and going like, hey, hey. I took your boy and I poisoned him to make it look like you did it. And look what you look like now. You look like a fucking asshole. Uh, all right, see you later. And your one uh, showed up later and set them both and everything in the building on fucking fire. Because don't tell people that you fucked up their life and don't finish the job after. Because then they can just take revenge on you and become a vengeful ghost for all eternity. <laughs> They've probably lost, got nothing to lose. I mean, that's the, that's the last person you should be like trying to talk oh, or absolutely. condescend to. Mm-mm. But she had to get it in. So the uh, the phase three is so like, and she basically has it on like the mirror on like a like a little pulley sort of system. It's like I just need to pull this in front of her to show how fucked up her face has gotten in this fight, and then she'll go fucking ballistic. Uh, then we need to run the fuck away, which is often what they need to do with these guys. <laughs> yes, the final phase seems to be always like get to the final phase. We've got to do it remotely because it ranges about three miles radius. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking atomic bomb for ghosts out there. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. this, this final phase seems to be well. Initially, setting everything on fire. I guess we'll mm. find out the full. Uh, what do they call it? Rapacious mantle or something? Uh, I thought it was like flaming mansion or something like that. So it like named oh, after it was the house like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, infernal mantle. Splendent mantle. That's because it's called resplendence. Oh, okay, um, yeah. No, it, it was it was definitely mance, as in you know, as in a manor or mansion. I see. Yeah. 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 That's it, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's where we leave it. So I guess one more episode of these two ghosts duking it out. Pokemon. And, uh, and then we'll and... get a cannibal child. He's going to yes, join the cast. Well, <laughs> we're not a first of cannibals in the roster or so far. So like, it's, let's not give him a hard time. You know, he he found a very, very troubled young man. Okay, He's, he's hmm. going to try and be kind to him. Yes, they do comment that he is S class uh, in this episode. That's exactly yeah, what looks- he's, he's a high S class. I, I appreciate that in his transformed form, he uh, has the giant, like, lengthy hands, which they say, you got to dodge those because those are solid. Um, they are, they will actually hit you. There's no ghostliness about them. But he's got his regular, like, form, like, hanging off that, but hanging out and wrapped up in his head and everything. But he's holding that tiny little plastic box, and that just kind of weirdly normalizes it. Because <laughs> it's like, ooh, I'm a, I'm a well-designed ghost. And it's like, I got this shitty little plastic box. It's like, I, I, I really like that part of the design. We were so well-designed, we aren't any pockets on this thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. But yes, should be very useful in, I guess, we have to remember, they don't try to kill that god. They try to then capture that god as well so they can have it fight. A worse uh, monster. A worse well, monster. He's got to eat like 51% of the, of, 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 the, of the god form and then it's yours. So, you know, we've yeah. got multiple now ghosts on the team. You know, Might be kind of leaning too heavily on those abilities now, but right there, especially about a contingent upon robbing the, the spirit for energy off, off your opponent. You know, my, my own kind of branch out, get an ice type in there or something, you know, just to make, <laughs> cover all the, all the bases you wanted. Mm-hmm. Yes, the big part of this episode essentially is the two ghosts eating the energy off each other mm. back and forth. Um, as you'll like turn a bit of the ghost of the, the courtesan into meatballs and devour it, but then not notice that he's having his energy drained by all the butterflies um, draining it off him, which mm. then allows the ghost to regenerate. And talking of regeneration, help episode 21, phase two in which the humans have a plan. We're going to lure everybody away from Thor's castle so we can get in there and get the barrier stone. It's a perfect plan. What are we going to do? Uh, look, we've managed to do it. Here's Azadora. He's shown up in his goofy-ass mask. So he's shown up to, to reinforce this other castle, not Castle Thor's, is it? Um, Thor's is the one that... Um, uh, Mikaros, the sage, is trying to get into. Yeah, this is a distraction by the the human forces um, to go like well, you'll you'll concentrate all your guys here, but we're actually going over there, and it'll be much easier to walk over, considering all most of your army is here currently. And oh, reveal... someone, someone loads of monsters. So that's it. Yeah. We can mm-hmm. do that. Not oh. demons or anything else. These are the monsters that we both have a hard time with. We got like hundreds of them to all mashing at your borders. And they, they say, it's like, that's right, we have a way of summoning these or setting up monster nests or something, I think they say. Yeah. But you're just a punk. How can you do that? 
Mm. So I may I, be a I, punk, I, but like, I can do it because of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that falls with Mikaros, a couple of like the mindless henchmen, and Edil is here as well. Mm. Uh, because he's got to get into another sword fight with uh, the demon who's definitely not, they're not definitely not sort of hate flirting by constantly killing each other, chopping pieces of each other. She keeps right? calling him that handsome bastard or something like handsome that, which is. Is this episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do appreciate the, the, the lower tier demons are fighting that guy, and they're, they're just like, yeah, oh, you may have defeated us, but you'll never defeat your one. And he's like, what? Your one's here? It's like, yeah, she's over there. Fucking get her kind of thing. It kind of self-preserving uh, uh, of themselves, but also it's just like we are not going to win a fight against this guy. He is he's better than us. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Hiura is the only one who manages to do some blows to uh, the sage. Manages to cut his hand off, but yes, she's like she's more concerned that his sword regenerated because hey, anybody knows that you can regenerate an arm. Um, <laughs> and he man's like, it's not it's not normal the thing you do and that thing that I do, but. Shh, 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 shut up about my sword. That's also another cheapness. Besides teleporting behind you every time I attack you, or it's you attack me, he seems to be made out of like some kind of profane shadow or smoke thing. So mm. I guess everything that's on like that. But it should work the same way, where if he runs out of juice, you can't do it no more. Yeah, but he says, so, "I got way more juice in the tank because you've been fighting all day." So yeah, but, then, that's when Ada runs in. Goes, "No, I must fight her. You go on ahead." And um, she's like, "I'm oh, bullshit. I haven't grown my arm back yet." But you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, Mikaros goes on ahead. He's like, oh, there's the barrier stone. It looks so beautiful. And then walk straight into a trap mm. of Azadora's devising because actually Azadora was here all the time. Who's there at the other castle? Why? It is Rubero, the dog man, wearing the mask. He takes the, his mask off so hastily his ears come off with it. And then he appears to pick <laughs> yeah. them up, put them back on. It's like, it's me, the, the dog man. You probably didn't recognize me without my ears or my little dog puppet hands. And they're like, oh, they got us. Um, not really yeah. a dog at all. You're just, just an ugly man. Hey. <laughs> and then we get Mikaros's origin story. As we learn, 1,500 years ago, he was but a uh, grunt in the human army fighting the demons when he saw Azadora as a young man Killing the shit out of us. Through all his entire unit. And so he pretended to be dead among the corpses. And the miasma of the demon world uh, altered him, unlike his colleagues, who the few other colleagues who survived, they died and were poisoned by it. Hmm. But the miasma has made him immortal. I appreciate that we get his backstory and it gives it a bit of Asdra. is like, oh, he used to be so peaceful. He used to be quite bloodthirsty. And it was like, 1500 years ago that that just that makes me ask more fucking questions that that explains nothing um <laughs> uh, yeah we have some we have some of zell's backstory so we learned that Kless has been doing none of these heroic things is in this sage is the one who's been finishing off the demons mm-hmm. uh, Kless goes in negotiates peace and and then your man comes in and is like oh you, you guys they were begging for peace right up until i killed them because I did that. I'm a bastard. I'm bastard yes. man. That's his and entire so, thing. As I was like, so you're here for revenge? He's like, no, I'm not here for revenge. I'm here to usher in the new world. Because that's what the world wants. And as we kind of go, like, you know, that means like everybody dies and like fucking resets. And he's like, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I'm yeah. going for. Like, uh, I'm going to stop you with trees. That's what's going to happen right now. Mm. It's like, I was, before I was just going to try and capture you, but now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of where we leave it off with these two about to be dual. Yeah, so Bukaris' power inside this room is reduced. He can't use his teleportation abilities, he discovers. Mm. Uh, but yes, he apparently traveled around the world getting more and more powerful, learning more and more magic. Uh, more and more banned, totally banned magic, um, as we see from one of the flashbacks. Yeah. But yeah, we've got a villain, and he's like the opposite of a hero. He's he. It's like he's the guy who wasn't the hero. He was the grunt, but the gas, the miasma, awakened him. And uh, mm. so yeah, got a motivation for everything now. Got a, a proper villain. We, who we? He's the guy we suspected being the villain as well. But yeah. also, yeah, there's gags like the ears falling off. Also, the mask is funny whenever it shows up. 
Because they don't there. react to it like, that's a dumb mask. It's like, it's that son of a bitch, he's a dumb mask. Yeah, like, they all react very seriously to it. Is there a human king at all, or is it all this this dude? Like, yeah, is that is there just him throwing his voice into an empty suit of armor? Like, yeah, could be. Because that thing did get stabbed in the face and didn't fucking react to it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this episode. It's uh, it's kind of. I think this is about halfway through the comic. Oh, okay. Halfway, uh, okay. Volume seven, I think it's there's twelve volumes of it. So, hmm. uh, go on for thirty nine then. Uh, it may well be, but I'm not sure. Concurrently, I suspect it might be taking a break after. Oh, okay. This right. Season. Right. Unless, I, unless I know any different, I don't know. Let me see. I can quickly check live chart while we talk about the next thing, which is Bullbuster episode nine. The merger draws near. Shiota's plot and the origin of the giant beasts are both revealed. What will Namedomi do? They'll fucking oh. break up the team, Elizabeth. It's like everyone's at each other's necks in this. It's like, oh no. And I feel I feel really uh, one bummed off by fun saying, no, you guys, you were fucking like this, this tight little office. You're all sound to each other. Except even, even to the jerk who got in. You no, know, he was he's got some okay qualities to him. But now you're all fucking on top of each other. And it's really disheartening. It's. Yeah, yeah the, the merger has really kind of set them against each other in some ways. Like, and I even appreciate like the, the accountant and uh, or the boss kind of going like, it's like we gotta. They, they've specifically written in it's like anyone under over the age of forty three or something like that. Oh, forty five. Yeah, yeah. that's that's, yeah. that's fucking that's ageist as shit. You can't put that in there. It's like, like that. that at all. He's as healthy as a bull. It's fine. Like he just twisted his ankle at one point. It's like yeah, he's he's a, he's good to go. And it's like uh, I mean, this uh, the counter kind of going is like this is like a really minor thing. Gen- they could fire us all fucking tomorrow if they wanted. So yeah. I, them asking this is actually like a really minor concession we give them. And he's still on the payroll just at a reduced pay. And and he's kind of listening from the office like yes yeah, i know okay. i'm just busted down i'm too old for this the ocean okay, away guys, the next generation. demote me to the office job i'm, I'm this, okay with it i'm just <laughs> I mean, to go out the stud uh, <laughs> obviously he knows that he cocks up last episode uh yeah uh, yeah and he doesn't want the other guys to be hurt by his cocking up uh like yeah, he's, he's, been a dec- he's been more than fucking decent, basically. Yeah, yeah, weirdly, after last episode, Muto is the one who is behaving responsibly this episode. Um, I'd like in, in comparison to the last one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the key thing is uh, the scientist leaks information to okay. our, yeah, to her, and it is that. As it turns out, we get half of the information halfway through the episode and the full information at the end. Yeah. Is so, that hmm. It is caused by electro bacteria. Oh, electrogenic bacteria. Yeah, yeah, electrogenic bacteria. So the idea is that they turn uh, one of the waste things, besides gas, which is the poison gas, which is bad, but, you know, it's just like, besides producing this gas, they produce electricity. So this is basically like a self-fulfilling power plant it could power itself with the bacteria and that kind of thing and it, i was wrong it wasn't intended to make monsters it's just that oh we and your man's kind of going like oh it mutated the animals it's like but we specifically tested it for ages to make sure it wouldn't mutate anything outside of the bacteria and it's like yeah but yeah, it combined it didn't with think about where you put of... it though and how it's going to interact with like indigenous local flora all right you didn't think about that did you? In this lake basically sucked in that stuff and then that's that goes into the water supply and then that affects all the fucking animals and it's just like oh okay so actually putting it in in lab testing doesn't infect other things it's like what about like world testing it's just like yeah it does fucking infect other things and the it's it sure the chemicals are obviously like we're, we're not letting that get out we're not letting we're not taking the fucking blame for it and yeah, i like the fact they even point out in this episode They'd, they'd get away they'd get away with it too because and they'd get away with it too if you tried to sue them because it's like no no we genetically engineered it to not fucking interfere with animals this is a thing we couldn't have predicted you know that kind of way it was just like they didn't make it to do this but it definitely did that thing <laughs> yeah I mean, the stuff with i mean the, it's really a while everyone's involved it's really a a uh tajima episode the boss because he's the one called into the meeting by the guy who's explaining it. I love the guy who's made it with that nervous 
shake he's got in the his shake leg. Shake he's got to quit smoking. Yeah, he's one is just yeah, like tapping yeah. that leg all the time. And, uh, and, rat, and rattling the coffee, you know, if I'd I, I, I go for a sip, but I might spit over it. It's just like, and it's just being so fun, meek and fun thing. If you're the boss of the company, if you're even answering these dudes all this time. Mm-hmm. Because it's clear, like, while this guy's saying, oh, yeah, we're, we're safe, it's his body language is telling you that. No, they they would probably be in trouble if this got out. Like uh, everything he's saying is like, no, no one's in fucking trouble. Like we just want you to find out who gave the leak from the the bio lab, which we also fucking own, by the way. We, that, that's that's just us protecting our information. We want you to just take care of it. It's like, what what do you mean, take care of it? You know, it's like it's all tone. What he's saying is just like in an Al Pacino kind of way. Oh did no. you, So you want me to fire someone? It's like, no, I want you to take care of it and it's just like fuck oh, like all of his body language all of his, his thing nothing what he's saying is mean or angry but his entire demeanor is like fuck it you are fucked you are in so much fucking trouble okay, he's doing I've, anime glasses he's I've doing the fun this is to complete the <laughs> yeah uh, and it also but we also learn from his dog bringing him his post that he hasn't been paying attention to that he's got a child support payments to make and then we learn later yeah. in the dialogue that he was the one who pushed for this plant on the island in the first place. He he was involved in the like in the company when they were making this back this electro bacteria, and it was just like, yeah, this is a great fucking idea. We specifically made sure it wouldn't mutate the fucking water supply. It does mutate this specific kind of coral, which then mutates the water supply. Eh, what are you gonna do? Well, it's, it's not. It's, no, it's, it, this coral has an effect on the animal's membrane which then allows the yes. bacteria to oh y- yeah i think the what the coral releases allows um the because the, the bacteria sorry the um the, the mutated thing shouldn't be able to permeate the animal's uh cells membrane but this coral pierces that membrane which, which means because it filtered through the coral yeah it's a very yeah. specific set of circumstances like a nice thrash into an evil <laughs> yes yeah yeah so yeah, the crux of the episode is yeah, uh, a ruby comes in with a thing, uh, makes everybody watch it, explains it, and then well, initially it has to go like it's just like, hey, I, I got the data, and your man's like, I'm taking that data, I'm bringing it to the boss, and we'll speak no fucking word of it. I'm going to make sure as little people get fired in this as possible. And she's like, yeah, it explains how the animals got mutated, and he's like, all right, we're definitely watching this now, but then I'm going to bring it right to the boss. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and then at the end, yeah, is like, well, you got to give it to the boss, and then we could probably, if we give it right away, maybe they won't even fire the scientist. Uh, and then mm. Tasha was like, no, let me deal with it. Let me deal with it. Yes, uh, Arumi is saying, yeah, you you're not doing it for the good of the island, are you? Uh, and if that, just, I'm going to you're, quit. You're just trying to absolve yourself. Yes. Yeah. Point, it's, point, it's, uh, point, even Matt saying to fun, like, as well, fun, the to do from short up ones in. If you, if you play your cards right in this merger, you, you could be putting back kind of fucking like, you no, know, back in the corporate realm, like, you know, yeah. like Batman, you know? It's not just threats. It's like promises of like, you fucking fix this. You clean this fucking problem up for us and yes. good things are coming your way, basically. Get that yeah. ex-wife off your back, you know. Get that know, alimony. Guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he's been making promises to the people of the island that he can't keep earlier in the series. Yeah, and making, yeah. And making jumps and assumptions on science that he really has no knowledge. Yeah. It's he just like, is, you know, he's an engineer. It, it, he's an architectural engineer. That's his fucking job. He is not a scientist. There's no scientific background. They have, you one fortunately has a little like thing of, it's like, you know, the regular rat and turns into a monster rat, like as a, as a thing in the presentation, um, the PowerPoint presentation is like, find he's like hmm. mm, mm, it does help. Yeah, um, it's, it's just like yeah. it's it's not that uh, that Tajme is like you no know, like uh, an immoral or or an evil man or anything like that. It's no. just he's a he's a weak, fallible human being is what yeah. he is, and yes. that's as that's they all like, you know, are. All mm. the characters in the show are, which is the good thing about it. Is because mm. mm. the other thing is is that the uh, Shiota have put in uh, essentially uh, like, a, a number lock on all the robots. Yes. Oh, yeah. your man being really mad about that. And he's like, these are my robots. He's like, no, these are Shiota Chemicals robots now. But as soon as the merger is fucking well, complete. In two weeks' time, there'll be Shiota Chemicals robots. In the, in I mean, the they already they already have the, what do they call it, bull duck in, bull the fucking, duck. in, the, yes. in the hangar. So it's just like, that's definitely theirs. And they, they're they paying for the fucking down payments for all these other fucking ones. So this isn't your fleet of robots. This is Shiota Chemicals fleet of robots. And he's like, but what if there's an emergency? If there's an emergency... The lock is automatically released because it's an emergency and we don't fucking need permission. And and, and he's just like, well, shit, I'm not, not a leg to fucking stand on then. That's really frustrating. You're a spy, aren't you? 
Um, thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty certain he's not a spy. It's just that I think he's just he's very company line, but he's not yeah. actually shit. Even though he is, he, he's a shit to work with, but he's not yes, actually they a definitely, bastard. They definitely sent him here to get rid of him. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, can you imagine working with him? Oh, no, <laughs> but he'll be useful here because he'll be our guy who will install the the number pad lock. Because yeah, he does it's just like, like, like no more when they're like, doing the big reveal at the end, where it's like, oh my god, and he's like, oh, there's the clock, I gotta punch out. <laughs> like, Dude, you he, fucking watch it? He's only I, there I, to he, work. If anything, he seems like you no, know, he's trying to be kind of conflict averse. Right? I'm just gonna go along yeah. with things, you know, I'm gonna do for what happens. I don't think he should be doing that now. For it's just like he's just trying to like have an easy time of it, but in doing so, he fucking you just doesn't know how to manage people though. If you get the fucking yeah. worst time. Mm-hmm. Zero crack out of him, but uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. we can work on that. Maybe a few more company barbecues. That's that's, that's the crack crushing thing as well. It's like, no, all that right, the throats, and then end of the company barbecue photo montage. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we're happy once. We're so happy once. Also, uh, I think Kate is most be kind of set this human drama thing. It's focusing more. You get, they're better at animating people. who are less, you see, of the giant monsters, the better. I love the fact that this I, show about giant mute, mute monsters and the robots that fight them um, is it, just like the most adult, normal, like easily followable, understandable kind of thing. It's just like... It's, oh, it's, it's so, full on fucking Aaron Brockovich for, for robots in it. Yeah. We're going yeah. go, 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 to put corporation down for going dumping fucking waste in this island and making a load of fucking mutants on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it's definitely that 80s, 90s industrial thriller genre that you don't see much these days um with an added giant robots uh i might have to go back and check hero mask out because this is the same director and writer oh, okay that's that show hmm. um i think that was generally one of those netflix shows that there was a uh, Seemed like a torrent of them that I didn't really pay much attention to. They were the like Simon Pegg in, like a Simon and Pegg look alike in. Or am I thinking of another one? Was that B? Mm, there was one around sure. the time where there's a character who's just drawn like Simon Pegg. Um, I, I assume it's not the boys because that's a different version. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Can't remember if it was B or Hero Mask. It definitely wasn't Sword Guy. Uh, mm. But they were all around that same area. I think Sword Guy was the one I got the furthest into. Uh, because, hey, Sword it's, Guy. It's this, sword Guy. There's, there's like from the studio to buy you Money Heist, here comes Sword <laughs> Guy. <laughs> it's G A I, the guy. Yes, I don't want to say it out loud. It's just from this first <laughs> person. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll put out as much crap right now. We've, we've gone to every possible iteration in the dictionary. You guys, just boil it down a bit. Now, Sword Guy. <laughs> Mm-mm. Colon Revengeance. Ah. Uh, tell me all about Jujutsu Kaisen, episode 43, Right and Wrong, part two. Oh, get some things right, get some things wrong. That's what it does. Uh, mm. Barra is finally kind of cracked to fucking go to the phone saying, oh, I know I want to take you out, you fucking flesh morphing motherfucker. It's kind of fun, like, you've been to kind of in this manner. And then you fucking can't do shit because I can attack your very soul. Because if you're linked together, I can just like get attack the real you right in his soul. And your whole thing is just the shape of the soul, the shape of the body. That's the whole thing I operate on. Oh mm-hmm. my no! Oh, right in the soul. Ow, oh, fuck that really hurts. And it's fun saying this is the one. This, this she, she's like she's as she says like she's my natural predator. She 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 fun fun take me out. I was like oh fuck, yeah. He, he didn't realize he had now. two natural predators in, and he's fighting both of them at the same time in two different bodies, which is bad. So he needs but to time to run switch. away. Hmm. And uh, you know, a bit more of like you know get that cat cat cool a little bit bit more of your fun like going toe to toe with the the real body and fun. Here's a runner as well. Fun saying get back you son of a bitch. And he runs down. They're on the concourse of the subway station. And Vaughn, oh, there's fun two of them now. There's fucking Kugasaki. And I got my truck was still going to go as a tag out. The clone one doesn't have the ability to kind of just kill you with a touch and just like explode your body. It doesn't have the main body's ability. Yeah, yeah. It can do that. So Nobara is operating under that assumption. But then they tag out. Is the real was running at her. She comes around the corner. Oh, this motherfucker, I'm going to take him out. Oh, she just lightly brushed my cheek. And that's all it takes. Mm-hmm. And, and then, another of my favorite characters is gone. Gone yep. out of the story. Otter's sad backstory. 
she was just a kid from a little podunk town who wanted something more for herself. She wanted to go up, I went to the rich kid's house and play Smash Brothers all the time. Uh, it was it was a childhood that she always looked back upon fondly. And, and basically her thing of was just like, fuck this small town thing. We three people who aren't technically from here, I think she might be from there. But she's like, we're going to get out of here and live a better life. Well, uh, I had a good life. Bye. I'm out of the show now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was operating on a thing. Oh, like maybe, like you know, hey, we see fucking people get fun, like you know, between livery, you, you get killed, like you know, before then he came back, you know. So who's to say it's gonna happen? Just like in the manner of fun thing, she, she, she might come back with a cool eye patch. No, just in the manner they render it here, it's just like it's like the fucking like head it's shot, like someone her, shot and her her the body just slumps yeah. to the ground, and then this 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 the slap of her head hitting the concrete. It's just like, yeah, I don't think she's going back to comic anymore. She's well gone. See, I, then, I thought Joe, for the longest time it would do that, but the more I've read the comic, the more I realize this is just a very cruel comic that does not like the. It's like, yeah, hey, I, like I, this I, character. You like this guy? He's fucking dead. I saw <laughs> someone joke that uh, learning about somebody's past in this in Jujutsu Kaisen is their death flag. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that holds true to this current chapter. <laughs> Mm, but yeah, it's not all the time. There are some characters who have survived yeah. beyond having their past revealed. So I assume those are the main characters at this point. Mm. Um, well, fun character polls are a uh, cruel mistress, unfortunately. Mm. But it is uh, this kind of crap. It is this kind of crass as well. It's just like, oh, we forgot to fucking flesh out this character. Let's do it right before we kill him off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you like this character? What if you knew their tragic backstory? Uh, I know the way. It, I know the way I think things are generated. You know, I know the way I can kind of be week to week in this funny guys. One the slender breaks for hard as because editorial said so. For me, this is kind of what kind of way it has to go. But it still feels clumsy when it can. It's just it's happened like a couple of times in this. This feels like yeah. clumsy whenever they do it. Um, it's and one of the things. I think I think it yeah. is already pissed off. I think he's already like we probably pushed him over the line. He's going to like you no know, break his one cardinal rule. I think we push him that far. Let's take out another one of his friends just to you know make sure he's really like you know the depths of despair and fury right now. You've killed two of his friends and my favorite characters. You've killed like a lot of civilians, like a lot of civilians. Um, which the comic is only getting to now again. Um, he's mad. He's plenty mad. You don't. You don't need to kill anyone else off. But no, you're very. You're a very cool comic, and you're going to do that. Okay, fair enough. Fair. Enough. It's. It is kind of annoying, and I. I did enjoy like the the animation of him just wailing into the dude, like beating him against a pillar. It was that, that was very nice. I was kind of hoping for more of uh, her fight with the with the doppelganger. Um, but that, that was very like zooming around the rooftops kind of thing. I was like, yeah, this wasn't kind of what I was expecting from it. So a little disappointed on that end of it. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just means she hasn't like, like dead to rights and she can just. Yeah. She got the motherfucker and then it. Toy around with them. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the, the things in this in the in the comic and in the show as well. Obviously, they're kind of like it's like I I got you, and it's like no, you don't, and it feels very cheap, like rug pulling out. It's it's narratively unsatisfying, basically. Yeah, there was a bit of that happening there now. Phone like I was I've been reading like Kaiju Number Eight uh, coming to TV screen soon, and <laughs> there was like you know I guess the main like villain in that now. It's kind of kept doing that. It's one of those fun things. It's like fucking, it's worse than Cell or any of those guys fun things. Oh, you got to fucking destroy every last bit of me. I, I, I've got one core. I've got like, you know, I've got like fucking five hearts or brains or cores. You've got to take on yeah, all of them. Yeah. And also I've like, you know, taken over this person's body who you knew. And now it's going to freak you out. Like, but oh, this fucking guy is like, just fuck off, right? Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> I suppose it works. Yeah. Before. You're getting as a, as a reader for angry at it, but you just can't get angry and kind of annoyed uh in a way of fun saying, why did I write it like this? God damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's it goes beyond like it becomes tiresome. It becomes tiresome is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, I guess, I mean, the, in Jujutsu Kaisen's favor, its two main villains aren't always on stage in the same way Kaiju number eight's main villain is. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. A lot He's of kind of around. always on stage mm -hmm. in some way or form, which I guess Naruto kind of had that problem as well to a degree early on. Um, we, we, even towards the end, upon saying, "This is the mastermind." No, no, no. This is the mastermind. No, no, no. I'm the head vampire, and it kind of kept literally the mask kept falling to the floor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I, I always feel like One Piece has has got the best format for these long ones. Of like, here's an island. Here's the villain for the island. He's a real Let's go dickhead. kick that motherfucker's ass. Mm. Move on to the next island. They didn't even <laughs> kill him. It's like sometimes the villain comes back and does other shit. It's like, yeah. 
and that's interesting too. Yeah, this island was, was a, it's usually this island was a socialist paradise until this fucker came along and found bought the monarchy and then fucked it up for everybody. Or he got <laughs> rid of the good ass. monarchy and replaced it with a bad monarchy, <laughs> as, as happens sometimes in one piece. Yeah. Uh, uh, then talking of getting rid of rulers, Doctor Stone, New World, Episode Nineteen, Last Man Standing. Nobody likes Abara. Everyone loves to hate Abara. But Tony gets his, and you're like, "Fuck it, yeah, get his ass." That's what we do to a villain. I forgot how long this went on for, because he's he's a wily motherfucker, and he's everything so he is on him great. is there for a reason. When, why is he wearing that hat? He's going, "Oh, he's he, he's worth a half. He's going to come <laughs> in handy one day." He's one. They they, yes. they laughed at it, but oh, he he's got the last laugh now. Mm-hmm. He's tenacious. Um, mm. And it's day. a different kind of tenacity to Senku and the lads, because basically Senku's just like, I've got a plan, and I've got, I, I have a plan, and it's like, okay, I, I have to throw that plan immediately out. Um, it was fun to see in the comments actually of last week. It was just like, how did Senku get out of it? And I was like, hee hee hee, wait till you find out, because it was just mm. like, it's actually very well done as a, as a, yes. as an ad lib plan by Chrome. But um, so they're they're all about the plans and knowing the science and knowing the technicality and it's like you can't beat me when it comes to counting. He says several times in this fucking episode. But then yes. Abara's just like, I have planned for most contingencies. I don't understand this sorcery, but I will fucking make my way through it somehow. Um, it's it's a different kind of tenacity that it, it's, it's what a, I don't trust nobodies. I don't <laughs> trust nobodies or nothings. And it's the opposite in that way, because obviously Senku and the lads all trust each other. He couldn't have gotten as far as he did without all of them. I appreciate he gives all of the statues a high five. Like, was like, what? Yes. They're not going to notice that when they came back. Yeah. But, you know. So the way he survives is because Chrome points out the Medusa beam is moving at a steady pace. So therefore, you can calculate how quickly it's moving and know when to throw the, uh, the revival acid fluid solution. Mm. Yeah, in because the they don't, like Senku's going like I had no time to experiment. I don't know if I dip my thumb in it. Does that mean it'll instantly reverse it, or does that mean my thumb is going to rot off for a th- after a few years? Or yeah, whatever the fuck? And it's, it's like, like no, it's it's going all that. And you can't, no, okay, I got a calculator. Well, it's just like fuck it, let's go. Fucking let's fucking hope now. It's just it's just, it's just that little bit of faith. Him him in the man of logic and science, he has to find more and that little bit of faith just to get him through this this time. Yeah. And, so and basically, every, Chrome, everyone stands with their arms outstretched, and as yeah, soon as they at, feel at the distance the of the tips car, of their fingers, which is, a, which is a thing they all know the size of, so yeah. yeah. So as you feel, as soon as you feel the tips of your fingers being petrified, you throw the other arm up, uh, which is why you can then do the high fives. Yeah, and then you can Senku can kind of look at that and it goes like, okay, so that's moving at a rate of whatever many meters, because I think that the car is a width of like five meters, so they have a rough idea to, to be spared five meters apart. Um, just like, okay, so if it's going that quick and it's like, I can't calculate wind resistance right now, it's like, okay, I'm good at throwing shit. I am good at counting for like several fucking, what was it like? A, was it a million, a couple of million years? It's a long yeah. fucking time. Yeah, yes. you probably should have also seen to, a, to adjust 000. as well, adjust as well for like, you know, a, not all of you are like, you know, like light, like muscly, like, you know, beautiful people. But you got fucking Kaseki in the midst of it. He's a little dwarf man. So he's, he's, he's about a half length, all right? He, 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 he counts for half. Right, can't be the same as all rest of you. I, I do appreciate, like, as everyone's getting turned into a statue and raising up their arm, they all get to have a, a final fucking thought is like, Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. And even Magma's like, Ha ha, fucking kill them. Ah. You know, everyone gets a thing that they get to say before they turn into a statue again, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so he manages to distract Ibarra with inventing the self driving car. Um, <laughs> kind of cheated it a little bit, yeah. Yes, just put a um, brick on the accelerator essentially, <laughs> but yeah, grabs the, pen- the Medusa, but then gets hasn't accounted for Abara having stabbing fingernails that he can put in his hand. Hmm. Uh, so then they chases him through the forest as he chases through Ibarra's the forest. Like, I know this island the best, you're fucked. Haha, you can't, but throw I can't a, use a the Medusa. Acid at me. Yeah, he yeah, throws the acid, well. throws two of them. Um, one hits the tree. He doesn't see where he doesn't bother looking to see where the other one went. <laughs> That's a desperate, a desperate ploy. I've ever I saw on his tree, and he's out in his bag. He's on the run. I have him in my sights. Hmm. Yes. He's a, then he realizes, oh, I've trapped you. And then he realizes, hang on a second, I've trapped you at that cliff you were trying to lure me to before. Um, but he only realizes that after he's thrown the Medusa yes, and loaded after he's it up. The Medusa. Yes. <laughs> and hmm. then. The drone comes in because the other bottle had hit Ryusei. 
and he's got, got the drone and they're ready to go again. Hmm. But no, I'm going to, then it becomes a tug of war between the, the the three of them to try and grab the Medusa. And, and now I know how the characters are drawn, but one is a gigantic muscular old man who is wily and the other are essentially two nerds. So it's kind of like, they're like, okay, uh, we're, we're kind of in a bit of trouble there. But then both of them are thinking, it's like, well, it's already preloaded with a fucking timer. We just need to let go of the right thing so the other guy gets hit by it. So it's, it's kind of like, it's like, who's going to fucking, like a reverse chicken, who's going to let go goes, first? Whoa, before I'm saying, oh, I told it, I told it, Mr. Mia going through my head at you, boom, and it's going to go off right back at you. But what if Reese Mia charges at it? It's like, you thought you could charge through it, and it's like, no, he didn't think he could charge through it. He grabbed it in midair, turned to stone, and also attached the earring to it. So Sink was just like, yeah, this this actually was a science weapon, this radio on my back the whole time. Um, fuck you, Ibarra. <laughs> Loads it up with another fucking thing. And five meter, one second. It's so good, man. This this bit is it's such a good back and forth. Like the the, the last couple of episodes have been, and all just desperate plays by everyone all times. <laughs> good shit. Yeah. And then we get like a, the usual. Let's do a quick flashback to how we got here, and then speak to the. Uh... He's the only sentimental when nobody is around to see him be yes. sentimental. <laughs> yeah, no one's around to see him sentimental. It's like, I'm all alone again for the first time and like since I st- started on this journey. And then he gets a phone call. He's like, oh, wait, no, I'm not. I got all these people supporting me. No one can see me cry. They're all stoned. It's okay. <laughs> Just go. Oh. <laughs> His scream is great. His scream of victory is fan fucking tastic. It, it's such a, it, it's, it's the powerful, like, yeah, I'm the warrior who beat you, but by by being more sneaky, basically, and trusting yes. in friends is the other and thing. Points out, yeah, it's also, as they say, comments like, the people who think they're intelligent are always the easiest ones to fall. Um, <laughs> but who should say that? <laughs> 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 uh, yes, uh, the foreshadowing for next season. Um, mm. But yeah, they, they, I guess we then we just got to do a few more wrap-up episodes, because I f- always forget these are quite short seasons. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, and again, it's the thing of we know where the plot's going because we've read the comic uh, and everything. It was like it's great to fucking see done out, especially like this this whole this whole run. Yeah, I think I'd yeah. forgotten the fine details of this fight, and so it was a yeah. thrill. I, I remember the timing out of the petrification beam. But, it's a great visual. Yeah, yeah. But all the back and forth with the bar of that had uh, that had escaped my memory. Um, yeah, bar is a great villain. And he said uh, he sounded differently to how I imagined him, but I do like the uh, performance of him. And has everybody frozen up, or is it just Dwayne again? It's just Dwayne again. It's just Dwayne. Okay. The room is actually quite warm right now. The heating came on some time ago. I just dropped this layer. Let us see the swimmers build. So then we finally got undead on. <coughs> oh, is my voice going again? <laughs> A shock of Niles Guns making an appearance. Um, Undead Unluck, episode nine, return, in which everybody piles on Victor, Victor, and in order to get Andy back. Hmm. Yep, we piled on him before we're going to have one. Put up our shirts, ladies, and just scooch right into him. <laughs> uh, one top, you no, know, if one gets Fuku and Shen out of Dodge. Uh, I wonder what thing he is on uh, with a name like that. Uh, who says, if one, you got to take me back. You want to go back and scratch out there? Yeah, but I'm the only one who can, who can stop him. Well, I know if one, it's somewhere in there and that, that dickhead's fucking brain is like, you know, there's a real Andy in there uh, and I'm the only one who can kind of get through to him and get us out of this mess. They're not doing bad, not doing too bad though. Like, there's some great little bits of one, like, Louise is just going to, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the leader. Okay, I can do shit also. I'm, I'm all like this. Fun saying, no, I'm getting the old defense in foil. I'm just going on guard and I'm setting it on fire and going flaming on guard and one doing kind of nice flourishes like that. It's good, you know. Everyone's getting cool shit to do, and it's it's kind of fun because um like obviously we the audience are kind of from the perspective of um Victor, who, who he's trying to figure out is like, what the fuck is this motherfucker in a gate? And I'm trying to figure out this shit. Because <laughs> it's like, okay, this person's just a huge brute that I can't I can't seem to damage for some fucking reason. It's like this guy. He just has laser balls. I don't think that's a negation thing. That that child is made of artifacts, but like other than that, like, like, and he's he's fighting them with all his clones. But um, yeah. So we're in the he's in the same position as the audience, kind of going like, what is their deal? Uh, he's kind of having fun with it as well, though. So he's having a good time. Yes. And then, as you say, Fuko shoves his head 
a pet top. You know, to give a like Nobody a move. We're gonna get a <laughs> knock on you. You're the real one, and I fucking know that when Annie's in there somewhere. He's in there somewhere. I'm gonna blow a fucking a bullet hole in here and yes. jam my finger in and it's like fun saying, Come on, Eddie, I know you're in there somewhere. I'm gonna touch your brain and it is you on truly one of the weirdest romantic gestures I've seen uh, like, in any bit of fiction. It'd be one thing, right, if you would attack the evil version of your romantic partner by shoving his head up your top to press your boobs up against him. It'd be another thing if you shoot him in the fucking head, point blank range, with a gun you were just fucking given by a martial artist. It'd be another thing if you jammed your fucking finger in there to poke his brain enough for, to make your boyfriend come out. And then it'd be another thing again if later on you had to jam a card in that same fucking hole. <laughs> it's just like there's a lot of brain trauma in this, and it's very romantic brain trauma. But it, it is weird. It, it, it makes me question Shen's dedication to the martial arts. He's like, oh, I'm going to go do the fun the kung fu at that point. Saying, oh, well, going to pull out the old fucking hand gun, the old hand gun. Oh, we have also oh, missed the karate. Yeah. There's a there's a kiss amongst this as well. There's a kiss where half of Andy comes back over half the face. Mm. They kiss and she's still got her thumb stuck in his head. His brain. Because if she didn't have her thumb stuck in his brain, he wouldn't be Andy currently. Yes. He needs the brain trauma to be Andy. And... There, there is a very romantic He's kiss while she is boy. touching his, his brain. The dike, not the blood coming out. <laughs> and the fact that she gets like blood sprayed in her face because it's point blank. Like none of this has happened. Like she's her, her boobs are pressed up against them. Like it is gonna fucking happen. Um, how how does this manage to be romantic and gross at the same fucking time? It's it's incredible. Who else? Who else would, would do that for you? Who else would like one thing? I'll fucking <laughs> yeah. shoot him in the head. Mm-hmm. If it was for love, I'll shoot him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, dear. Um, yeah, just just great stuff. And then the the thing of her recuperating in the hospital after. Um, I again, I, like when people are complaining about the CG water and this, like they animated that water coming in really well. The, the thing, but obviously, you know, she got fucked up. Um, because it it well, is. Is, that, like, is there fire or water? We can't do both. Okay, we'll both we'll both on the fire. The fire effects are going great. We see the whole yep. whole meteor or shower coming down and nuke the entire town. Uh, yeah. And also, again, it's going to be a repeat effect when you open up, 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 up a pocket. So they kind of, they kind of like, like uncanny, like, you no know, demonic fire. Kind of, it's all three thick lines that kind of sprays out of them. That's, that's like, yeah. cool a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I did appreciate the um the, the way it's framed and everything because it's, it's so visually different because it was getting, like, into that dark red and even darker as it goes on. But then kind of cut Fuku in the hospital room. And Andy's like, I've read your, your, your entire, the, of your favorite manga. It's really good. I, I did enjoy that. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's that stark, wise fucking Evangelion yeah. fucking hot, uh, hospital bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, it's just it's, 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 it's nice little things that one's saying. That, 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 that orb girl, Tatiana, she, she seems pretty kind of kind and she brought the whole, all the stuff over for you. Mm. And we got to introduce our, our new recurring character, which is, um, I was going to say Ann Pan Man. It's not, it's Pan... And panda or something like that. The little the little bread panda, which I was like, why isn't that a mascot for something already? Oh, That's a right. great design. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. That's uh, uh yeah, so done is pretty much all action, but yeah, it's and then there's that that, that, that nice little thing in the in the middle of it, like, you know. Uh mm. I know. There's one there's like a, a, there's a ton of heart in this. It always has been, like. Uh yeah. And that heart when it gets kind of bigger, and that heart is going to get kind of, it's going to be fucking like you know, it's going to get broken. It's going to get fucking like very sorrowful and melancholy at points in this. But that's only because oh, the heart is so big and warm to begin with. Um, hmm. oh, it's a bad thing, but again, happy to see you getting this kind of treatment. It's really good. And I mean, like again, like you, you get all these like nice heartfelt moments and cool fucking action sequences and also kind of Andy going like you know touching her in the head going like it's like it's gonna be okay and he's like oh you shouldn't touch me because the look is like no we're gonna have a whole conversation then he walks away like a cool guy and he's like that was a cool guy thing I just said there and, and she's like oh you've embarrassed me and then he gets immediately fucking eviscerated by gout of flame it's like oh right yeah the unlock <laughs> yeah so when when they show up to the end it's like hey we got the quest results back um Andy is on fire with his dick out um but they just point out, I was like, yeah, he went up a rank because he caught clothes, the thing that's trying to grow back in him now. So they're like, oh, yeah. the, the, we're, we're in a shuffling <laughs> kind of situation here. That's that's cool. But that's we're getting the results. Earlier they figured out, like, in the phone thing. One of these, like, victors is a real one, the phone thing. That one's all scared up. All of his dicks hanging out. <laughs> I think he's a real one. <laughs> that's how you know. It doesn't, oh, that's scary. It's, it's not arrested him, phone state. And, you know, 
he's fighting who he's, you know, and it's just like, no, the, the, the sensor bar is swinging around. It's just going everywhere like that. It's, like, it's, it's more yeah, noticeable yeah, that his dick is out and swinging because his pants keep trying to grow back, which is just like that. That's the, that's what Fugo says. She notices it's the dick. It's definitely the swinging dick. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's it for this week. Hmm. Next week, we've got a coded episode to talk about in addition to everything else. Yay! A little bit of Canon Conan. Kaito Kid mm. is coming. Mm. Yes, it, 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 it's taking a break for a while, the comic, wherever it is. Okay. That's right. I mean, it does that's periodic. Not, that's I what think, he said there. I, 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 think think like an it's, I think it's like a mystery block. I think occasionally has to stop and think up the new mysteries. Sure, I yeah. I suppose yeah. it does. Because you know, it said it would be like, you know, oh, it's, I think it was upwards of a month anyway. Uh, enjoy it while uh, it lasts. I mean, yeah, it must be getting... It must be closer to ending than One Piece is, surely. Uh, <laughs> surely. Mm. I mean, it feels like it we're in the anime, and that's yeah. like three to four volumes behind where the comic is. So uh, we will see whether it advances the plot anything next time or whether it's just some goofing around with Kid, which I'm fine because mm. I love Kid wiling, winding up Conan. Uh, because I like the characters who wind Conan up because it prevents him from being too much of a smug bastard. Mm. Um, that is it for this week, though. We'll be back with that next week. Ta-ta for now. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>